photographers, there's a lot that goes into running a full business. Now you might be in school and wanting to drop out, you might have a full-time job, or you might be in high school right now looking to become a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, or a full-time photographer to make a living. In this video, we're talking about the pros and cons and what you need to know before embarking on this journey. Let's get this video started. All right guys, so my name is Jeremy Daly. I am a wedding photographer and I've been shooting weddings for six years. It's allowed me to buy real estate investments and have a meaningful life traveling around the world to capture amazing wedding days. Uh, there's a lot I've learned. I've made some killer mistakes. I've made some awesome successes. I've had the ups and downs and the flows of what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Now let's dive in. Should you become a full-time photographer there's a lot of things that goes into it. I'm gonna give you guys some light of the pros and cons, what you need to know. So let's get this video started. So you wanna be a full-time photographer because photography is your passion. It's something you're thinking about while you're doing other things when you're at your job, at school, at college. That's all you can think about. Now this is good. Let that thrive you, let that build up, let that be the motivation to consider it. However, when you embark on the journey of doing this full-time, uh, if you don't set up your business properly, this could turn into something that's not a blessing. Let me expand. Now, if you are now relying this to eat, to pay your rent, uh, and you're not getting enough clients for the meaningful art you like doing, well, now you're gonna have to take on other things with photography that you might not like doing as much. Uh, maybe you're bringing on real estate jobs or doing drone photography for this, and you're not passionate about it. Your passion is, uh, you know, doing the cute dog photography. So we're gonna analyze different markets and analyze if you actually should jump the ship or not uh, later on in this video. But please know uh, that it could come in and actually change your passion from a passion into a job. Uh, I just want you guys to know that. It could lose a little bit of the sexiness before. Uh, so this is something really important to know before jumping in. Now, if you're a self-starter, you love this stuff and you wanna go all in, all right, baby, let's go. We're running a business, it's gonna be so much fun for you which goes into our next point. Let's go back over there to talk about it. <laughs> I think there are two major personality types when it comes to running a business and if you should be a full-time creative or a part-time creative. Let me tell you the difference. Let's say Sally works at a accounting firm. She's an accountant, but her dream is to be a wedding photographer. Now, Sally loves to be told what to do, timelines, how to do it. She loved going to school because she was told curriculum, she was told this and that, and that is her comfort zone. Now, I'm not telling you to lean into your comfort zone, I'm always gonna tell you to get out of it. However, with personality types, sometimes you need to lean into it. So let's say Sally stops her accounting job that pays her a handsome amount and she really uh, is now not getting that proven income um, from that source, and now she's in this world of going to a desk every day and thinking, who's gonna tell me what to do? I think I know what I need to do. I need to post to my Facebook saying, hey guys, I'm a photographer now, hire me. And two of her soccer moms hire her. She gets hired for a senior portrait session and she's just using her organic uh, database or organic people in her life to get photo shoots from, but she doesn't know how to market properly. Or if she kept her job, that was giving her amazing income. And then she side hustled this to a point uh, or kept it always as a side hustle and then it keeps the creative juices going. You're only, you're gonna have the freedom to only book shoots that you want to book. Instead of being all in, freaking out that you have all these expenses that, at the end of the month and then you're like, oh, I gotta do shoots that drain me, burn me out that I don't like. And these are lessons I've gone through, um, which is why I'm telling you all this. I've gone through both flows of doing only shoots I love for so long being so creative and taking on some jobs that would burn me out and take me away because I felt the pressure of uh, you know other things throughout my entrepreneur life. So I think it really depends on your personality state. Now, the flip side, if you're a self-starter, if you're a self-starter, you don't like being told what to do, you love creating your own path, you love, love, love learning online and doing everything yourself, you love being a leader, then this could be an amazing path for you. Uh, because going into this journey, that was me growing up. I hated being told what to do. I always wanted to do my own thing outside of school and outside, I, whatever my passions were, I was going all in, baby, all on my terms. So just because my personality is really good for this, that's why I love entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship can be very daunting and scary at times, but it's the best way to push yourself out of your comfort zone. 
So really think if you want to juggle your photography passion as an income, as a side, or if you want to do it all in and the pros and cons. Now, if you think your personality likes the structure, but you also want this full time, grow it as a part time thing as big as you can. And then once it's equal to your other income, then jump ship because then you know there's proof in the pudding. But if you don't have any income yet and you're a self starter and that is your personality, maybe it's time to take risk and move back with mom and dad and go all in. So weigh your pros and cons, know who yourself, have self-awareness and know what market that you're in. And that's what we're going to go in over there and talk about because different markets yield different returns with the photography. So let's wheel back for this. So before we analyze different markets, we need to know what it's actually like to run a business. So let's go over some of the things that you're going to have to go through on a monthly, daily, yearly basis. Uh, you really have to be a self starter. That's already a given. We've talked about that. But on top of being the best photographer in your niche, you need to be better. So you need to have unique selling proposition. Uh, for me, I do photo, video, same day highlight films, constant footage of ceremonies and whatnot. And I make humans make it at ease and eat. So, so energetic and I make them laugh in front of my camera. So those are like my five points added together plus Jeremy Daly. That's my unique selling proposition to my clients on top of my cool photo editing. And uh, that's who I am. And no one's Jeremy Daly in the world. Uh, so you have to think how can you be so unique on top? These are the things you're going to have to learn. Uh, you're going to have to be very organized with your bookkeeping, your taxes. Uh, are you collecting 30% of each paycheck to pay? Because when you're employed, they pay the government for you before you get a paycheck. Are you responsible not to do all that? I made those mistakes starting out. I wasn't doing all of that. So uh, it's definitely something that you have to keep in mind. On top, your mindset. Are you pushing your mindset? Are you growing? Are you pushing yourself? Because once you're on your own, no one's telling you how to learn. You have to take that all on to yourself. Uh, when I first started, I was reading all the books I could about business, mindset, money, investing, uh, taxes, uh, on top of the niche that I was in, photography and video. How could I be the best photographer and videographer? On top, how could I be the best business individual and just a happy human, health and, and relationships and all that fun stuff? So uh, I think if you really like use the equation of learning all this on your own, you can be a very successful business person and photographer. If you quit your job just thinking I'm going to be the best photographer in the world, that will get my tribe and that will get my uh, awesome clients. You might have a hard time because you could be the best photographer in the world. But if you can't get in the eyes of your ideal target demographic, are you going to get your amazing clients? So definitely consider learning to be the best business person you can on top of being the best photographer and learning your unique selling proposition. Uh, so adding in the, the cool elements into you and learning how to sell that property and paint the story online so you can attract ideal, amazing clients that love you individually. And they're not, you're not just a commodity photographer. Before you become full time, it's really important to consider what market you're jumping into. If you want to be the best dog photographer and there's a lot of hit people in your town, you're in New York city, a huge pool of people in a small area and you rent a studio and you love dogs. This could be a cool market. I bet there's a lot of people with tiny dogs, medium sized dogs, and of course big dogs uh, in New York that want hip photos of their dogs, like little family photos. Those are the new family photos. That could be a new uh, niche that I'm painting here. This is just an example. However, if you live in Bedford, Ontario, that has a population of a thousand people and that's your dream, maybe you should consider doing agriculture photography. So you really need to analyze where you are and if you can create a new niche where you live. Because if you're trying, if your dreams to be a certain style of photographer in your local area and it, there's no market for it, you're going to, you might fail. Now, don't assume until you analyze the market, go see the numbers, go test campaigns, go try things and uh, market shoots. And if there's no demand for it, I'll try something new. And because uh, you don't want to quit your day job to be a dope wedding, uh, dope dog photographer. And then you're in Bedford, Ontario with a thousand people. Uh, but if you're in New York, that's awesome or if you're in Toronto. Uh, so those, that's a little example. You really need to analyze, know the numbers, uh, see what the market average is, if there's even a market there already. There's proof in the pudding if there's a market for it. Hence weddings, tons of wedding photographers, time to have a unique selling proposition that makes me not a commodity. And I studied my local market into the Toronto market, so I know what's average, and then my goal is to be above average. So. Uh, by being unique and charging above average uh, booking prices, then that's how I can attract my amazing ideal 
target clients, that's my branding, and really being me as a human online. Uh, that's just, I'm just brain dumping here, I'm ranting. Now you have to remember, running a business is like 90% uh, the back end work of, of so much fun, which is running the business. I'm an entrepreneur first, a wedding photographer is my current vehicle that I love using my entrepreneurship tools to solve amazing problems for my clients. And I love it. But I've always been a business person growing up and I, I truly cherish telling stories with my camera too. It's a, my favorite hobby in life. So combining the two just made sense. So you have to consider, are you open to mastering business, marketing, sales, branding, and do you enjoy doing that? If you hate everything I just said, Maybe you need to learn to like it, you know, pick up a couple books and see if it interests you. And then if it still doesn't, consider keeping your job or finding another career path while keeping this as a side hustle or a side passion. So I'm trying to paint the, the pros and cons here because before you go into photography school, like they don't really tell you all of this stuff, um, going to college or going to university for this stuff. So it's nice to just tell you the pros and cons for what I experienced the last six, seven years of doing this and uh, shed some light on it. Overall, I know you can be successful doing this. You, anything's learnable in life. It's so exciting. I was a shy little kid growing up. I never thought I'd be, you know, commanding attention of huge weddings and posing people and talking to people and being outgoing and having multiple sales calls every week and meeting amazing clients throughout the week and doing engagement sessions. I would have told you not in a million years, but everything's learnable in life, okay? So if you have that mindset and you're self-starting, you wanna grow and learn, you can start a photography business, I believe in you. And these are kind of the pros and cons. Don't let the cons scare you, lean into them. Lean into those fears and know you can do it. So please like this video if you guys wanna see more. I'm gonna start making daily videos here and also in the Own Your Look Facebook group, helping photographers master their look in Lightroom. And I want you guys to get more value. So join the family there. Feel free to subscribe and put on the bell notifications because I'm gonna be putting out a ton of content in the future. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Comment below if you're gonna start a photography business, if you already have what your ups and downs were, and what you're just excited about. I believe in you. See you in the next one.